Okay guys, so here we are. We've opened up Blender and we've got our splash screen. Let's turn that off or just click off of it somewhere so it goes away. And here we're greeted with our main screen, our 3D viewport. Now I've got my end tabs open here. I don't need those for this particular tutorial. So I'm going to turn those off. And here in the lower left corner of our viewport, you can see I've got screencast keys turned on to help you. First thing I want to do is add in a new cylinder. We're going to change the default settings once we add it. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, press the A key. It's going to bring up our add menu. I'll select the cylinder and with the cylinder properties open here, I'm going to drop this down to 12 vertices. I'm going to press enter and that makes our cylinder look a little bit boxy, but that's okay. That's what we want. I'm going to come over here to solid view so that we can see our model and I'm going to turn off x-ray mode because we don't need to look at this in x-ray mode just yet. Now it's a little bit stocky. I think I want to make this a little bit, uh, well, let's say a little bit narrower. So I'm going to hit S. I'm going to select our barrel that we're working with. I'm going to hit S and then shift Z and I'm going to size this so that the Z axis or the height of the barrel stays approximately the same. I've got that done. I'm going to press control A and just align the rotation and scale or apply the rotation and scale. With our model selected, I'm going, to, I'm going to enter edit mode by pressing the tab key. And then I'm going to press three on my keyboard to face select, or you can come over here and just click on this little icon here. So with this upper face selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down, scroll down. So I'm looking at it from the bottom, hold the shift key down and select the bottom face. And I'm going to press X on the keyboard. And then I'm going to only delete faces or face only delete. That leaves us with a hollow cylinder. So far, so good. Now, what I want to do is I want to add in some, uh, I want to add in a little indentation in between the boards because if you ever look at a barrel when the boards butt up to each other, there's kind of like a small gap there. And what we want to do is mimic that gap. So to do that, what, I wanna, what I'd like to do is this. I'd like to go into x-ray mode. I'm going to press the edge select tool here or press two on my keyboard. I'm going to press one on my numeric keypad or the tilde key so that I'm looking at this from the side. And then I'm going to box select. Let's grab this. And we'll do box select. I'm going to box select my vertices that are going vertical, not horizontal. So if we zoom out a little bit here, you can see our model here. And I've got just those edges selected. With that done, I'm going to press Control B to apply a small bevel to these edges. I'm going to just pull my mouse back a little bit, just like that, and I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to scroll up just so I get one bevel cut, just like so. And I'm going to make this a little smaller, just about like that. And then I'm going to press the left mouse button to make that a permanent change. Okay, now this is the tricky part. I'm going to go back and turn off x-ray mode. What I'd like to do is come back here and select all the edges that are in between the bevel cuts that we just made. Hold the shift key down, select one of the edges, and then while you're holding the shift key down, you can select all the other middle vertice or edges that we've created with our cut. So I'm still holding the shift key down and I'm selecting each of these other ones, just like so. And I'm gonna go all the way around the model, make sure I've selected all of them. And with all of those selected, now what I want to do is hit the S key to size this and then shift Z. So S and then shift Z. And then I'm going to move my mouse in so that I make kind of like a little V groove in between each of the boards of our barrel, just like that. I'm going to press tab to go into object mode. And here you can see a more detailed look at what I was talking about by making the cuts there in the edges along the vertical axis of the boards. Okay, with that done, let's go back into edit mode so that we can edit our model. I'm going to press Control R to add in some loop cuts. So I'm going to add in seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like so. I'm going to press my left mouse button twice to make those permanent. And then we'll look at this from the side view, just like so. Now I want to, while well, I'm still in edge select mode here, I want to select this middle edge only not all seven edges that I have. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select this edge right there. With that edge selected, I'm going to hold the Alt key down and select it again. And now that grabs the complete edge all the way around the perimeter of our barrel right into the middle. Okay, now I want to turn on proportional editing. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit this little box next to this little 
up angle loop and that turns on proportional editing and I want to hit the S key and you'll see when I hit the S key I can move my mouse up and down and I get my circle of influence just like so and what I want to do is have my circle of influence surround the barrel just about like that and I want to just bring my inner circle out enough to get a barrel curve on the entire model that we just created. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm going to turn off proportional editing because we don't need it right now. That's perfect. Okay, so now I want to do this. I want to take this barrel and I'm going to model a new barrel to go along with this for our inner edges. And how I'm going to do that is very simple. The inside of our barrel, it doesn't really matter, but we want to add in a new circle. So I'm going to press tab to go into object mode. Actually, I'm going to stay in edit mode. And here's why I'm going to stay in edit mode, because if I add anything in edit mode, it becomes part of this one model and not a separate object in our model. So I'm going to hit A twice to deselect everything. I'm going to hit Shift A to add in a new uh, mesh, and we're going to come down to circle. Now you can see it adds the circle right there. I'm going to bring this up to the top. And again, we're going to look at this from the side view so that I can see where it is. And what I want to do is bring this up to the top of my barrel, just like so. And I'm just eyeballing this just for now. And I'm going to come back out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to hit S and then bring this in about like so, just like that. So far, so good. Again, we're still working with one model, even though I'm adding geometry to it. Okay, now. One more thing I have to do is duplicate this circle. So with that selected, I'm going to hit Shift D and then press Enter. And now you can see if I move the blue arrow, I've got a new circle. I'm going to bring that down just below our barrel. Again, we'll look at it from the side. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to bring this up to the bottom or base of our barrel, just like that. So I'm going to click off of that. I'm going to come over here to the bottom. I'm going to select this loop cut with the Alt key so I've got the entire cut. While that's selected, I'm going to hit the Shift key, then the Alt key again, and I'm going to select the loop next to it. So you can see I have this bottom loop all selected, both inner and outer, but they're not connected with faces. So to connect them with faces, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the Edge menu, and we're going to come down to Bridge Edge Loops, just like so. And if I click off of that, you can see what it did. It created some geometry in there to create faces along those two edges. We're going to do the same with the top. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to select, I'm going to hold the Alt key down and select this loop, hold the Shift key, Alt key, and then we're going to click on this one. We've got those selected, and now I'll come over to Edge, and then Bridge. Okay, so now those are bridged together, and we have to do one more to solidify this model. I'm going to come over and press my Alt key, I'm going to click on this loop, and you can see I've got the inner loop selected around the upper part of the barrel, but on the inside loop. We're going to go into the middle of the barrel. We're going to hold the Shift key and the Alt key together, then click on this loop. And now I've got the bottom inner loop and the upper inner loop selected. With that selected, I'm going to hold the or come over to the Edge menu and then Bridge Edge Loops. We're going to go into Object Mode by pressing Tab, and you can see our barrel is now solid. So far, so good. Next step we have to do is to make the upper cap of the barrel and the lower cap of the barrel. And this is very easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a new cylinder. And I'm doing this in object mode so that it is not modeled into the same barrel. So I'll press Shift A and we're going to come over and add in a new cylinder. With that selected, I'm going to hit S and then Z. I'm going to size this along the Z axis just about like so. I'm going to bring this up to the top just so that it sits a little bit lower than the edge of our barrel, just like that. Then I'm going to hit S, and I'm going to size this down so that it's hidden within our barrel like that. Okay, perfect. I want to make another copy of this for the bottom, because the bottom of our barrel is open. You don't necessarily have to if you're using this in a scene, but I just like to make sure everything is complete. So with this upper cap selected, I'm going to press Shift D and then press Enter. I'm going to go into front view again, or side view, whichever works for you. And I'm going to bring this duplicate cap down to the bottom, just so it sits right above the bottom part of our barrel. And if you have to adjust it, just move that up a little bit. And if it's protruding out of your barrel, you can always size it. It is not, so we're in good shape. I'm going to leave that just like that. 
And now we have the last parts of our barrel to make. And if you remember, barrels have banding around those, and those are usually made of metal. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in another circle in object mode. Shift A, I'm going to come over to mesh, and then down to circle. And there is our circle right there. And what I want to do is enter edit mode. With that circle selected, I'm going to press E to extrude, and then ZZ twice on my keyboard. I'm going to make this go up a bit like so. And then I'm from the front view, I want to press A to select all, and I'm just going to put this about right in the middle, just like that. Okay, that's done, and I've got a nice band around it, but you can see our band is not, it has no dimension or no thickness. Don't worry, we're not done with it yet. I am going to go into object mode with the band selected. I'm going to press Shift D and then Enter, and I'm going to go back into front mode or front view mode. I'm going to size this right along the bottom, just like so. And again, let's go back to our first band. Okay, so I've got my center band selected right now, and what I want to do is give this some thickness. Now, we can do this one of two ways. We can add in a modifier, or we can just extrude the faces. So I prefer just to extrude the faces. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select my face select tool right here, or press 3 on my keyboard. Now I'll press extrude and then size, and then I can size those in about like so. And if I press tab, you can see we have a nice solid band around our barrel, and it's got some nice dimensions. Okay, I've got that done here, but we need to make our lower band and our upper band so that the bands are good to go. With our lower band selected, again, we're going to go into edit mode. And I am going to edge select this time. So I'm going to edge select, and I'm going to edge select this top part here with the Alt key. I'm going to select the entire band upper ring. And I'm going to look at this from the front view again. We're going to zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to press S, and I'm going to size that up a little bit so it matches about the angle of our barrel, just like so. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. And now let's select the face mode so we can come over here, select face mode or three on the keyboard. And again, we're going to select all. And I'm going to hit extrude and then size. And then I'll bring that in a little bit so that it gives us some thickness to our band just like that. I'm going to press tab on my keyboard. Again, we're going to go into front view. And now I'm going to size this band down so that it fits the circumference of our barrel. And if I do it like that, you can see if I zoom out, Let's go here. If I zoom in and look at the barrel here, we've got a nice band um, that matches the circumference of our barrel and the angle of the sides of the barrel. Okay, almost done. With that selected, I'm going to press Shift D and then press Enter. And then I'm going to press RX 180 to rotate that 180 degrees. So our duplicate is the exact opposite of our lower barrel. And we'll bring that up, or our lower band. And I'm going to bring that up to the top right here. So that if we look at our barrel now, uh, I've got a barrel with three bands that go all along the perimeter of the barrel, holding the boards in place. Okay, guys, so that's how we do the modeling. Let's add some, let's add some color to this so that it looks more like a barrel. Very simple. We're going to come over and we're going to select each of our items here. And I'm going to create some new materials. I could create them all at once, but we're going to do it with each... Uh, each of these items selected. And what I want to do is give my upper and lower caps to the barrel a slightly different color than the wood tone of the barrel itself. So we'll come over to the materials button on our, our properties panel here, and I'm going to hit add a new material, and I'm going to call this wood one. Oops, wood one. Okay, let's give that a color. I'm going to make this a little bit on the brown side. And to do that, we're going to come down here. I'm going to make that a little bit light, just like so. And we're going to come over to Materials View right there. And you can see on our model, we have a light brown cap on the bottom. Perfect. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom cap. The bottom cap has no material to select. So with that bottom cap selected, I'll come over right here to this little icon here, and I will apply Wood 1 to that model. Okay, so far so good. Now you'll see that I've got some other items in there. I've modeled uh, different colors in there. It was from a previous uh, test on this piece. Now I want to make a new color for the barrel. So I'm going to select my barrel, come down to the materials icon here, select new, and we're going to call this, oh, let's see, barrel color. 
And with that selected there, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to again drop this down. I'm going to make this a little bit darker brown, just about like so. And now that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, now let's add a new material for the banding. So we'll come over to New here. And I'm going to double click this icon right there. And we're going to call this Metal Band. Press Enter. And let's give this a slight shade of gray. We're going to make this a little bit darker. And you can see the color tone here in our 3D viewport. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to make this metallic so it'll make it a little bit shinier. I'll turn down the specular. I'm going to turn down the roughness a little bit and increase the sheen tint. It's okay. You can just leave it the way it was, but I'm going to leave it like that. I want a little shine to my metal band. Let's select our other band right there, the second band, and I'm going to add in the band color, which is, where is it? Metal band. Grab that. Let's add in metal band right there. And then we'll grab that third band and we'll apply a new color for that metal band, just like so. Now you can leave it all in separate pieces and you can parent each, you can parent each of these objects to each other. Or you can do what I like to do and basically join them together. Now this is how I would do it. You probably have a different way maybe, or maybe you'll just follow along with me. But in x-ray mode so that I can see the entire model and we're going to look at that in solid mode. I'm going to select all the bits. Press Control J and join them as one object. And then we'll go into material mode and you'll see by joining them, they still have their metal uh, and wood tones. So nothing's really changed. And then I can go into rendered view if I want to and I'll select uh, right now I've got cycles selected and that's kind of what I want. And if we look at this under cycles rendering, there is our barrel. It's all one object. So I can come over here and change the name, barrel. And now it's ready to export out as any item you want. If you're going to use this in a scene or just save your assets, uh, put it in an asset library, however you want to handle it, that model is ready to go. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be doing more Blender 3.0 tutorials, getting more and more complex as we go along, and we'll be diving into many more features of Blender 3.0 as time progresses. Thanks for watching and have a great day.